global platform now that Caitlin will have um, coming into the professional rank. So uh, it's really a great time to be in basketball. The WNBA just gave Europe their golden opportunity as Caitlin Clark's first minutes were leaked by the European League. Caitlin Clark, the superstar who changed women's basketball in the U.S., is heading overseas. And honestly, who can blame her? And from the sounds of this interview, it seems like she's probably going to make more money overseas in EuroLeague than she did during this WNBA season. The commissioner told her that she could make $700,000 playing in the WNBA. Let's look at the facts because they show a harsh reality. Despite being a star and breaking viewership records, Clark was earning only $76,000 in the WNBA. On the other hand, in Europe, players are getting paid way more, with salaries in the hundreds of thousands, along with free housing, transportation, and even taxes covered. The WNBA couldn't compete with Ice Cube's offer of $5 million for just 10 games. Caitlin Clark has now broke that glass ceiling and they should be bowing at her. She's going to create jobs and money. The viewership stats paint an even more embarrassing picture for the WNBA. Clark's games averaged 1.18 million viewers, while regular WNBA games struggled to hit 394,000. That's triple the audience, and now it's walking right out the door. The moment Clark left the playoffs, ratings dropped by 50%. The Aces Liberty game? A disappointing 929,000 viewers. Unrivaled League needs Caitlin Clark, and they are preparing to offer her a massive deal. But is it all too little too late? But this isn't just about money. Europe's offering something the WNBA never could, real competition. The European season runs from October to April, not just a summer fling like the WNBA. Clark's about to face top talent from Russia, Turkey, Spain, and France. This isn't your typical American-style game. It's faster, more physical, and packed with strategy. Remember Diana Taurasi? Russia paid her $1.5 million when the WNBA's top salary was $107,000. History's repeating itself, but this time it's worse because Clark isn't just any player. She's a phenomenon who transformed the game. The European fans are already buzzing. These aren't casual viewers. They're die-hard basketball fanatics who pack arenas regardless of who's playing. Now they're getting the biggest name in women's basketball? The atmosphere is about to explode. The WNBA's treatment of Clark was shocking. While she was packing arenas and pushing for other players to get bonuses, they treated her like any other rookie. She faced constant physical challenges on the court dealt with negativity from competitors and coaches, yet still gave her best performance every night. Feel like there could be a team overseas who would love to snatch Caitlin Clark away from us and give her a crazy offer. I mean, Ice Cube was about to give her five million to play in less than 10 games in the big three, so. Europe isn't just getting a player, they're gaining a marketing sensation. Clark will soon be featured on billboards from London to Paris. The sponsorship deals alone make the WNBA's offer seem insignificant. She's stepping into the ranks of basketball legends like Taurasi and Brianna Stewart, but with one major difference, she's bringing a huge American fan base with her. No matter how the cash the WNBA elevates, remember, it could have been even better. You messed it up. You messed it up. The WNBA missed a huge opportunity, and it's hard to believe. They had the most marketable player in the history of women's basketball, someone who could have easily tripled their viewership, and they let her leave. Why? To stick to their salary structure? To make a point about treating everyone the same? Now the WNBA is stuck with empty arenas, falling ratings, and a tough lesson on appreciating talent. Europe didn't have to make much of an effort. They simply gave Clark what she deserved. A fair salary, proper treatment, and respect for her skills. The competition level in Europe isn't just different, it's a whole new world. In Russia, it's about power and physicality. In Turkey, it's quick plays and strategic thinking. Clark's not just going to play basketball. She's going to evolve her game in ways the WNBA never allowed. 
That's that sounds like a dream. Yeah. Traveling around Europe, yeah. playing basketball. Like, like we went to Paris for the played in Paris for the Euroleague Championship. This move could spark a mass departure. Other WNBA stars are paying attention and weighing their options. Why stay in a league that doesn't appreciate them when Europe offers more money, better treatment, and tougher competition? The WNBA's dominance over top women's basketball talent may be coming to an end. For European basketball, it's like hitting the jackpot without even trying. They're getting the most thrilling player in women's basketball, along with her huge American fan base. The European League, established in 1958 long before the WNBA, knows exactly how to make the most of this opportunity. The WNBA can blame themselves for this disaster. They had something special. A player who could fill arenas, dominate sports center, and make people care about women's basketball like never before. Instead of building around her, they stuck to their rigid system and watched her walk away. Indiana Fever was turning away games into home games, and so it's kind of sad that through all of that, Caitlin was still advocating for players on the other team to get bonuses because she saw the kind of money and, and eyeballs and viewership that all of this was generating. As Clark packs her bags for Europe, the WNBA's left wondering what could have been. Their brightest star, their biggest draw, their chance at mainstream success, all gone because they couldn't see what was right in front of them. Europe's about to show them exactly what they missed out on, and there's nothing they can do but watch. The saddest part? The WNBA won't get a second chance at this. Players like Clark don't come along often, and when they do, you need to move heaven and earth to keep them. Europe understood that. The WNBA didn't. Now they'll have years to think about their mistake while Clark lights up arenas across Europe and builds her legacy there instead of in America. That's the reality the WNBA is facing. Empty seats, falling ratings, and the knowledge that they had basketball's next big thing in their hands and let her slip away. Europe's not just getting a player. They're getting the future of women's basketball. The WNBA? They're getting exactly what they deserve. Yeah, I, this. I want to say it's three million bucks a year for eight to ten years. It's almost 30 million bucks, something like that. In the world of sports endorsements, things just got wild. Nike just dropped a bombshell with a new contract for Caitlin Clark, aiming to lock her in as their star while Adidas fights to take her away. The competition for her just hit a whole new level. Let's break it down. Before Clark even stepped foot on a WNBA court, Nike had her locked down with a deal that made everyone's jaws drop. We're talking serious cash and the promise of her very own shoe line. Leftists are idiots. Idiots. They're not about business. They're not about growing the WNBA. They're about diversity, equity, and inclusion. This is insanity, what they're doing to Caitlin Clark. But then, Nike pushed back the release date for Clark's signature shoe not once, but twice. It went from coming soon to maybe someday faster than you can say, Airball, and while Nike was busy shuffling papers and twiddling their thumbs, Clark was out there setting the basketball world on fire. Adidas quietly stepped in while Nike wasn't paying attention and made their move, and they didn't play around. The offer was huge, enough to surprise even the pros, but it wasn't just about the money. Adidas was offering Clark something athletes hardly ever get. However, I will say that Caitlin Clark has created more buzz around the basketball landscape and has actually transformed and revived a league that was the WNBA, and she is getting paid a measly 20 8 million for eight years as opposed to Wemby's 100. Imagine being a rookie and suddenly having the power to shape your own brand, design your own campaigns, and connect with your fans on your own terms. It's like being handed the keys to the kingdom. Adidas wasn't just offering a contract, they were offering a partnership. Meanwhile, back at Nike HQ, alarms were going off. They suddenly realized they were about to lose the biggest thing in women's basketball since, well, ever. Clark wasn't just any player. She was the face of the WNBA, a record breaker, a game changer, and Nike had treated her like an afterthought. The NBA season, it was announced that Caitlin Clark signed a massive endorsement deal with Nike. This deal was for eight years, $28 million with a signature sneaker included. Now, at the time, a lot of us were... So Nike did what any panicking corporate giant would do. They threw everything at the wall to see what would stick. Bigger bonuses, check, 
faster production timelines? You got it. A marketing blitz that would make Super Bowl ads look like local car dealership commercials? Absolutely. He struck absolute gold when they signed Caitlin Clark to an eight-year, $28 million endorsement deal. So why in the world? And with that, Nike has not done one thing to promote her. We have not seen any commercials. We have not seen any ads. We have not seen any Caitlin Clark merchandise. And we for sure as hell have not seen any Caitlin Clark signature. But here's the kicker. It might all be too little, too late. Clark's fans had been watching and they weren't happy. They saw how Nike sidelined their idol pushing other players to the forefront while Clark was left waiting in the wings. And in the age of social media, fan loyalty can make or break a brand. Now, this whole mess isn't just playing out in boardrooms and on basketball courts. Oh no, it's headed for the courtroom. Nike's not just trying to win back Clark, they're gearing up to sue Adidas. They're claiming Adidas played dirty, trying to lure Clark away despite her existing contract. It's like watching two heavyweight boxers squaring up, with Clark caught in the middle of the ring. On one side, you've got Nike, the reigning champ, desperate to hold on to their title. On the other, Adidas, the scrappy challenger willing to bend the rules for a shot at the crown. So in conversations with people in the know, it indeed has something to do with the WNBA MVP and Nike athlete Asia Wilson. But beyond Wilson, it's about the culture of the company that's more concerned with quelling noise rather than making it as Nike once used to. And let's not forget what's really at stake here. This isn't just about shoes or contracts. It's about the future of women's basketball. Clark has single-handedly revitalized the WNBA, bringing in viewers by the millions and turning regular season games into must-see events. She's not just a player, she's a phenomenon. This will be a whole new offering and probably tap into a market that Nike and other sports apparel companies really haven't before. You know what the yeah, contract is? I want to say it's three million bucks a year for eight to 10 years. It's almost 30 million bucks, something like that. The brutal realization finally hit Nike and they showed a middle finger to Adidas with the new Caitlin Clark contract. But the biggest shocker here is that Nike's not only lost The real irony? While Nike and Adidas battle it out, they're both missing the bigger picture. Clark deserves far more than what either is offering. She's outshining veteran players, breaking records, and pulling in crowds that rival NBA teams. Yet, despite all the hype, her deal is still a fraction of what top male athletes earn. It shows the ongoing gap in sports. Clark has changed the game, but she's being treated like a bargaining piece instead of the MVP she truly is. No wonder Adidas's offer was so appealing. They seem to understand her real worth, both on and off the court. As this drama unfolds, it's raising some big questions about the sports industry as a whole. How do we value athletes, especially women, in a world where social media influence can be just as important as on-court performance? Are the old ways of doing business still relevant in a rapidly changing landscape? One thing's for sure, whatever happens next, it's going to shake up the industry. If Clark ends up with Adidas, it could signal a shift in power dynamics, showing that even giants like Nike aren't invincible. If she stays with Nike, it might force the company to rethink how they treat their athletes, especially the rising stars. And let's not forget the fans in all this. They're the ones who've been riding with Clark from day one, filling arenas and blowing up social media with every game. They're watching this corporate tug of war with a mix of fascination and frustration. After all, they just want to see their idol get the respect and recognition she deserves. As we wait to see how this all shakes out, one thing is clear. Caitlin Clark has changed the game, both on and off the court. She's shown that women's basketball can pull in the big crowds and the big bucks. She's proven that a rookie can have the kind of star power that makes corporate giants sweat. Whatever happens next, whether Clark ends up with Nike or Adidas or decides to start her own shoe company, hey, stranger things have happened, one thing's for certain, the sports world will never be the same. Clark has set a new standard, not just for women's basketball, but for how athletes should be valued and treated. So here we are, watching two giants of the sports world duke it out over one incredible athlete. On one side, we've got Nike, the established king trying to hold on to their crown. On the other, Adidas, the challenger ready to risk it all for a shot at the top. And in the middle of it all, Caitlin Clark is the rookie who's shaking up not just the WNBA, but the entire sports industry. Whatever happens next, one thing's for sure, the game will never be the same.
everything else. Y'all owe us a debt. And damn it, if we are participating in a sport that loses money for 27 straight years, damn it, you better fly as commercial. I mean, you better fly as private. The WNBA's 2024 season was about to bankruptcy as Clark and Reese left the WNBA. Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese played in the league. Everyone thought we'd see the sport reach new heights. And in many ways, it did. But here's the kicker. The New York Post just dropped a bombshell, claiming the league's about to take a $40 million hit this season. Talk about a plot twist. Let's break it down. Since these two superstars hit the court, we've seen some crazy good results. Sold out crowds? Check. Merchandise flying off the shelves? You bet. TV ratings through the roof? Absolutely. ESPN's viewership shot up by a whopping 170%. And get this, there were over 100 more sold-out games compared to last year. That's not just good, that's insane. The WNBA's 2024 season was a roller coaster with Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese taking center stage. These two rookies shook things up, but the league's still in a financial pickle. Let's break it down. Since the Marina Mabry trade, and she has stepped up her game in that opportunity. Caitlin Clark for three, rattles it around for her first deep shot. Well, she's definitely taken that golden advice. Recently, being the first WNBA player that has recorded consecutive 20 plus point rebound games. She said, I love she plays hard, I like the way she, she plays. I love her, I love the way Caitlin Clark is playing. Clark and Reese faced off four times when the Indiana Fever met the Chicago Sky. Clark's team came out on top, winning three out of four games. Clark played all 40 games this season, while Reese managed 34 before a wrist injury sidelined her. Looking at the numbers, Clark's got the edge in most areas. She averaged 19.2 points, 5.7 rebounds, and 8.4 assists per game. Reese, known for her rebounding skills, averaged 13.6 points and a whopping 13.1 rebounds per game. Clark shot better too, with a 41.7% field goal percentage and a 34.4% three-point percentage. Reese shot 39.1% from the field but struggled from behind the arc, hitting only 18.8% of her threes. For the whole season, Clark racked up 769 points, 337 assists, and 53 steals. Reese totaled 462 points and led the league in rebounds with 446. She even set a record for most rebounds in a single season before an injury cut her run short. They get a gift sent to them called Caitlin Clark. She is sprinkling magic all around the WNBA, making a sport that no one likes likable and watchable. And instead of showing any gratitude towards Caitlin Clark, they have set out to destroy Caitlin Clark. This is what women do. So what's the deal? Why is the league still losing cash? Well, they were bracing for a $52 million loss when the season kicked off. But let's be real, that's still a lot of money to lose. They have so little understanding of who actually built the league that they're playing in, who is, who's carried the weight of the league that they're playing in, who has financed their charity league. They have no gratitude towards those people. The WNBA's problem? It's just not raking in enough dough to turn a profit. They're pinning their hopes on a $2.2 billion media rights deal that's set to kick in during the 2026 season. But even with that, the numbers aren't adding up. Reflecting back on Caitlin Clark's rookie season, I have honestly never seen a company fumble the bag so hard like the WNBA fumbled Caitlin Clark. League exec spilled the tea to the New York Post, saying, WNBA owes the NBA so much we won't see any windfall for years. Now, with the Indiana Fever, Clark's team, out of the playoffs, and Chicago Sky dealing with Reese's injury, the league's immediate future isn't looking too rosy. It's like the basketball gods decided to throw a wrench in the works, just when things were getting good. But let's talk about Angel Reese for a second. She recently opened up about her WNBA salary, and it's not pretty. It doesn't cover my bills, she said. When one of your biggest stars is saying they can't make ends meet, you know, you've got a problem. The WNBA is banking on more players like Clark and Reese to help them break free from the NBA's shadow. It's a tall order, but crazier things have happened in sports. So, what's the takeaway here? The WNBA's in a weird spot. 
on one hand, they've got these incredible players bringing in fans and making the game more exciting than ever. On the other, they're still hemorrhaging money like there's no tomorrow. It's like they're stuck in this bizarre limbo, too successful to ignore, but not quite successful enough to stand on their own two feet. The big question is, can they keep this momentum going? Can they find a way to turn all this buzz into cold, hard cash? Or are they going to be stuck playing second fiddle to the NBA forever? One thing's for sure, the WNBA's got some serious thinking to do. They've got the talent, and they've got the fans, now they just need to figure out how to make the dollars make sense. In the meantime, Clark is about to travel for the Europe League, and who knows, maybe her star power will be enough to push the WNBA over the edge and into profitability. But for now, the league's future is as unpredictable as a basketball bouncing on the rim.